the enzymes and their functions. Enzymes are special molecules that speed up the cell's chemical reactions. Here is a glucose molecule how the carbons are bind together and form a ring structure, as well as the hydrogens and oxygen um, uh, atoms uh, to the carbon. Let's number those uh, carbon atoms, one through six. And between the atoms in the molecule, we have bonds. These are the Purp, uh, pink ones, and these bonds contain tons of energy. The problem for the cell is how to get those energy to be uh, able to use it as useful energy. These uh, bonds contain the chemical potential energy. And uh, these energies that they are in the bond, the chemical potential energies, they are not released spontaneously. Here is a graph of the energy level of a reactant or a subst substance and where the reaction path as it, it goes down through chemical reaction, now the energy level of the product will be lower. The, an energy barrier, however, must be overcome before the chemical reaction begins. And this energy is called the activation energy because it, it activates the reactants or the substance. We can think of an activation energy as the amount of energy needed for the reactant molecule to move upward to a higher energy level. But one way to speed up the chemical reaction is adding heat and uh, the heat will loosen up the bonds, break the bonds easier, so it will be pretty good. But the problem is that too much heat will kill the cells. So the other um, solution is the enzymes. They function as biological catalysts. They increase the rate of the reaction without being consumed by the reaction itself. And they are usually proteins. They increase the rate, and they are usually proteins, but not all the time. That's why I put a little bit of star next to it. Now, let's see how the, ener the enzyme is going to lower the activation energy so the bonds will get uh, loosened up a little bit so it will not need as much of activation energy for the substra substance, uh, substrate to go through and release its chemical potential energy, its bonds. So that's the product down that has a lower potential energy, chemical energy, and the enzyme uh, forms a complex with the substrate and the substrate enzyme complex uh, will form the activation energy compared to without enzyme, it's way lower, so it will be easier for the uh, reactant to go through the reaction. Now, enzymes at work or in work, what they do, a specific enzyme catalyzes each uh, cellular reaction uh, individually. An enzyme is very, very selective in a reaction that it catalyzes. So this is the enzyme. Has a shape, also a distinctive shape that determines the enzyme specificity. The What I just drew all around, that uh, color is the active site where the substrate will bind. This will be substrate one. And that fits exactly into the active uh, site and substrate two. Now this enzyme pretty much is doing combining the substrate one uh, with two forming, for example, a disaccharide. So enzyme substrate complex will form. This whole thing is the enzyme com uh, substrate complex. And when the reaction happens, now with the tape, 
the enzyme stays behind without any change and the product will leave the enzyme. For every enzyme, there, is an, there are optimal conditions under which it is most effective for the temperature is really important for in our body, the body temperature, as well as the pH is usually around 7, but as we stated out, the blood is a little bit alkaline, so 7.35 till 7.45. Uh, many enzymes work with helpers, and this is an enzyme again. It has its active site. The enzyme has, yeah, it's not a good color. Now you can see the active site. The helper, or it's called the cofactor, binds to the active site and function in the catalysis, so in the chemical reaction it will take an active part also. The cofactor can be inorganic, such as zinc, iron, and copper, but also it can be organic, so it contains hydrogen and carbon, and uh, if it's organic, it's called the coenzyme. The cofactor's name is coenzyme. So many vitamins act as coenzymes in chemical reactions in our body, like vitamin B. The cofactor is non-protein. I want to just point this out. This is really important. So the enzymes usually non uh, high percent they are proteins but the cofactors are not protein molecules enzyme regulations that's that will be our last topic chemicals that interfere with an enzyme's activity is called an inhibitor so slowing down or shutting down the enzymes uh, capability in the chemical reaction. Inhibitors can be competitive inhibitors or a competitive inhibition. And uh, here is an enzyme, again, the active site. This is the enzyme. And let's say this is a disaccharide and it's going to go through hydrolysis with the help of the enzyme so they will they will sit the molecule will sit into the active site and here comes the enzyme hydrolysis and it's going to be two uh, monosaccharides again and these are going to be the products now the substrate from so the product is going to sit into the active site so in this case no more substrate is going to be able to go through the chemical reaction with the help of the enzyme if there's few sub uh, products after that the enzyme starts to work again and starts to uh, do hydrol uh, hydrolysis and produce more products. This is a negative feedback where the substance, the product, will block the enzyme's uh, activity. The other one is non-competitive inhibitors. The enzyme, it's a non-competitive, so they don't fight for the active site. On the other hand, this is the active site again, we have an allosteric site. Allosteric site is a site on the enzyme where, where there's a molecule that can combine with the allosteric site and it will change the shape of the active site so the substrate cannot fit into the active site so no reaction will take place. Examples for uh, those molecules are toxins, drugs or natural chemicals in the body too. So when there's no allosteric uh, protein over there, it's going to go. <laughs>